Man is meant to move. That's why it has two legs. It's meant to travel. It's meant to explore new areas of this planet, of this gorgeous planet. Look at this area. It's amazing. It's meant to explore new areas of consciousness, new areas of relationship. Marriage is another problem that we have. <laughs> what are the odds? What are the odds that... What are the odds that 90% of the people are meant to be with just one person in the creativity of luckless existence for the entirety of their life? I'm not saying it's inauthentic for everyone that's married. Not at all. For some people, that's actually their theme. And it's beautiful. I love when I see, you know, two 90-year-old people still holding hands, having met at 20 years old or 15 years old. Or, that's gorgeous. It's such a beautiful story. But it's not everyone's story. Most of us are mo meant to move about, whether that is with or without that partner. And sometimes that means breaking up and or coming back together later on. You'd be surprised if there really is that connection, that true connection. Then often it can separate while you're exploring different ways, different passions. And then it's meant to get back together at some point or not. But man is meant to move, to be dynamic, to be flexible. That's what create in my eyes, that's how I see creation. That's how I see we are getting these impulses, but we've suppressed these things for so long. Hence, we've become egotistical. Hence, we've become selfish because now all we have is our tiny little corner inside of a lackful universe. But we, we have not given ourselves permission to desire more than what we've created for ourselves. As a result, we become very attached to the little things that we have created for ourselves. And as soon as something seems to disrupt that, we say, oh, well, I'm attached. I'll have to meditate on that for a bit or study Buddhism. We're only attached because we've limited ourselves to a tiny, tiny corner of what we're meant to actually explore. If we would have opened up to completely exploring the truth of our being in all the ways that we could and were designed to and are still designed to and are still getting the impulses to, that lack mentality would not be nearly as dense, if at all present. And that's what we see when we look at people that are, shall we say, maybe more on a physical level adventurous. Like people that travel a lot and people that, I'm not saying that they're happy, I'm not saying that they figured out how to live life or how, you know, they've not completely figured out the signs of happiness, not all of them. But you can see the difference between someone that has worked a nine to five job that is not of their passion for decades and someone that has traveled the world for decades and done what they love to do, whether that was physical, whether that gave them money or no money, that has met many, many people, has had many relationships, you can see a difference in aliveness, no? Just as a very general example. It's not always true, but generally speaking, we can sense, oh wow. This is simply because they have, in general speaking, followed the natural rhythm of creation a little bit more than we have taught ourselves, or some of us have taught ourselves to do. And so even without any consciousness of spirituality or spiritual teachings, simply by acting on the natural rhythm of their impulse, they have been more spiritually aligned than most of us have been, even when we go and read books about the now and go and attend retreats. Put someone that has gone to these non-dual retreats for 20 years and put them next to a rock climber that has traveled the world and has no notion of consciousness, except through their direct experience of being in the zone, and if you would have some kind of system device that could measure the level of aliveness in these two beings, the non-dual seeker would lose nine out of 10 times, if not 100% of the time, the spiritual seeker would lose. Not that this is a battle of comparison. I'm simply sharing this to wake you up, to make you see that desire is meant to be included in the package of being human. It's not meant to be excluded. That is insistence, that is egotistical, that is you being selfish, thinking you know better than the intelligence of creation. Doesn't that feel good to acknowledge that for a moment? If it doesn't, then you're insistent even upon holding on to this insistence. And then it feels good to acknowledge that. If that doesn't feel good, then you're insistent upon keeping these... Blah, blah, blah. So just let it feel good, okay? Make it easy on me and yourself. It feels good to acknowledge that trying to keep away desires and passion and inspiration and bliss and excitement is a selfish thing to do. Doesn't that free you up? Just to acknowledge that for a moment. That even if you have this like, oh shit, I've been doing that for 40 years. I could have lived this amazing life. 
That's all right. That's a, that's a wake up call right there. It's not a judgment. It's not that it's too late. It's a wake up call. You are not too old. Believe it or not. Doesn't matter what you believe. Doesn't matter what condition your physicality is in. Doesn't matter what condition your circumstances are in. I've seen people change their lives overnight because they had a shift in consciousness, a shift in logic, therefore a shift in belief system, and the belief system energetically recreated the entirety of their circumstances, relationships, job, career, activities, physical existence, like health, vitality, in a matter of weeks. The shift happens overnight or can happen overnight, but the implementation of that can happen so rapidly as well, days, weeks, depending on how attached you are to your currently created vision, how afraid you are that if you let it break open and let it become more adventurous, how you'll end up with lack. If you collapse back into the systems that you know best, how to keep yourself safe, how to give yourself manageable amount of joy. If that's what you are not yet tired of, then that is your birthright to have that choice. Choice is your birthright. Your higher self always has to you will honor your free will, your free choice as a person. If you do not wish to receive, if you do not wish to allow, then you will not receive and you will not allow. That's not because it doesn't want to give it. It's because you're telling it no. And it's unconditional love. Unconditional love means that if a portion of itself generated out of the desire to, out of the blueprint to create an, a most epic experience of itself, can be in humble ways, it doesn't have to be a rock star, can be through not ever being known in the public, but just helping out people or whatever. Whatever you're passionate about, when you act on that every single day, it makes you an epic expression of existence.